Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Go, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Amigos. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's a Wednesday, Aaron. This is our, not our normal recording day. Everything's hello. everything's a flutter here in Amigos Studios. Um, we're talking about Super Hang On this week. Hang on for your life. Um, it seems like every episode we talk about if you've been on a motorcycle before. I swear that we just talked about that a second ago. So we we're, not, we're not. We're not even going to talk about motorcycles. I want to know what your all-time favorite TV snack is. Um, all of them. <laughs> what's so, the all-time TV snacks? I'll tell you. I like. Uh, uh, well, before you answer the question, uh, okay. what's your all-time favorite food to eat snacks with? Wait a minute. That didn't make any sense. No. What's your all-time favorite TV show to eat snacks in front of? Um. It's funny, different TV shows evoke different types of watching habits. Sure, right? sure. Uh, for example, uh, when I, 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 like, I do like to watch, I do like to snack and watch UFC. Mm. You know, get some chips or some mm-hmm. sandwiches. If I'm watching like a big football game, you got to get some pizza, right? Mm. That was yeah. traditionally. But like, I had a, I had a, uh, um, I had a tradition that when I watched Sherlock Holmes back up, you know, the uh, the ones I like. With Jeremy Brad, mm-hmm. I have a I have a big pipe, and I would always smoke my pipe just like Sherlock Holmes. Get, really get into it, you know. Did you have a deer stalker cap that you also donned? I don't have one, but really, the deer stalker was sort of a faux tradition in Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. It, it, they did use it in the series, but it was a more of a, a nod to the masses than it was the, uh, the actual books. Um, when I yeah, there are certain things I watch that when I watch them, I want to drink. So that I try not to watch those at the wrong time. <laughs> Give me an example of, of a show that you like to booze it up with, or or even do worse stuff than drink. There, uh, there's it just. Um, let me think. Well, anything that like something like a Big Lebowski or something. I always want to kick a few back when I watch that, you know. And then from my younger days, there was there was a movie called Go. You ever seen that movie? No. It was sort of like. Uh, um, it was sort of like a uh, uh, an o- a teenage ode to Pulp Fiction, I guess. Okay. With a story split in like five different sections. I love this movie, and the soundtrack's great. And it sort of like has a raver flair to it. So when I see that, I want to get myself into trouble, because that, tradi- that was when I first <laughs> saw it. You know, we were doing stuff with Fraction of Dunn, you know, back in the day. So but what, what about you? What do you usually... I'm sure you sit around watching golf or something and eating, I don't know, a trick checks mix or something. No, no, no. This is a, I'm a big. I'm just actually. I was surprised to hear when I watch. Whenever I watch wrestling, I gotta have some snacks. You gotta yeah. have snacks for Raw. You gotta, especially when I watch it, because I don't really watch new wrestling. But whenever I fire up like Abdullah the Butcher's greatest matches, I gotta have just like nonstop torrent of junk food into my face. Um, what I like to do is I like to get the big bag of fun size variety candy bars and eat about 600 of those Uh you just just finish off the whole the whole the whole bag let me ask you a question here before you continue and i want an honest answer all right okay how much wrestling have you watched in the this year how many hours worth of wrestling um i don't know more than one hour more than one hour i would say more than one hour less than two hours in the year for the year for the year okay Okay. but but i watch wrestling in spurts and i'll tell you why because i visit the amigos retro gaming youtube channel which you also visit and whatever you're watching shows up on here and so there's a lot of wrestling stuff and a lot of times it'll just be like short matches so i'll watch or a lot of times it'll be like full madison square garden shows and i'll watch like the introduction and i'll watch a little bit of the first match so little chunks add up over time it is funny how since we both share access to that channel that our our uh, two 
uh, separate tastes intertwine into a big wad of goofy <laughs> suggestions. You know, a lot of wrestling, and it also depends on my uh, what kind of phase I'm going through, or what. Like, I see a lot of marching band stuff come mm-hmm. and go, yeah, or some kind of crazy fusion jazz. <laughs> you know, and I remember seeing stuff about sailboats come and go, and stuff about VR come and go. You can so you can trace through time. all of my yeah, all of my phases through YouTube. That's where I could see where we're heading. It's like, okay, boat's going to get a vote, <laughs> and, then, and then you did, you know? But when I watch football, I've got to have something heavy. You can't just eat chips and watch football. i got to have, like, you know what I like is going over to Sheets. You ever been over to Sheets? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yourself one of those tater tot bowls where they just <laughs> layer the bottom with tater tots, and they throw whatever you want on top of it. I've never, Steak, never seen those. tortillas. <laughs> Steak. Yeah, no whatever you want, man. And so you get one of those, and that's what that's your football watching food right there you know you know what no one ever does anymore i remember when i was a kid everybody did this and i don't see anyone doing it now remember when people would eat chips and dip and i don't mean like cheese dip i mean like french onion dip french onion dip you don't see that as often as you used to i wonder why that is maybe it's just because back then there weren't as many options it's still super tasty i do i like a good french and we should get some of that for the amigathon but here's a fun fact yeah, that is the only time that I like to eat ruffled chips. Is yeah, yeah, onion because does. the ruffles help you scoop up the actual goods. Exactly. There. Yeah. Exactly. We Ordinarily, need to get some of that for the thing. Yeah. All right. Sounds good, man. Yeah. I'm ready. And this year we'll have plenty of time to eat while uh, Amiga Bill and uh, Retro Man Cave are doing their thing. So have plenty of time to drink some Jägermeister and root beer too. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. when they come back from that first break, they we may be in trouble, <laughs> but. <laughs> Well, speaking of trouble, Aaron, let's talk about what's been going on over at EverythingAmiga.com. We got a new article this week. Nothing troublesome at all has been going on over there, (laughs) but we do have a new article. up Now, this one, I have to say, was kind of interesting to me. They always are, really, but this is an interesting article from The Dunk. The Dunk. style. Talking about Amiga games with licensed music. Now, We've stumbled across plenty of Amiga games that had licensed music, but they weren't supposed to have it. <laughs> Especially PD games. You yeah, them all or time. Rainbow Islands. But the dunk goes into uh, games that actually had used licensed music that they were allowed to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to run down a few he picked. Of course, a, a couple of these are my perennial favorites. But Xenon 2, Bomb the Bass. Love that one. Uh, great tune. In fact, that tune makes that game tolerable. Uh, gods, you know, into the wonderful. That's a good little tune in mm-hmm. there. It's not as good as my singing right there. Well, I, I don't know. It's hard to talk that. Here's one, uh, Magic Pockets with Betty Boo. Mm-hmm. I don't know that one. This is remember when Blondie did that lame rap song? It sounds which, like that. Which one? The first one, the one that everybody claims the is the first rap song of all time. Cultural yeah, appropriation. Five, she always talks about Fab Five Freddy. Mm-hmm. He's in the video too with his dumb clocks. Um, then a game called The Power. Did we did we play The Power, Bo? That's no, we've never here. played The we've Power. Played that one. And then Oops Up uh, is another one. And then, of course, you, get, you can't talk about licensed music without Rise of the Freaking Robots. Bo. Right. You know, with Brian May. Brian May. Who apparently... <laughs> His contributions to that to that soundtrack were minuscule. I think I, it was like recall. one guitar note. He's went wow and, and during the stage select screen. He was here recently, wasn't he? Brian May. Hopefully, he's feeling better. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, he I, stuck one here at the end of uh, Project Eight with the eighteen twelve overture uh, in there from Tchaikovsky. Uh, uh, I will say that uh, the uh, the snap by the power. Yeah. Uh, this guy sounds exactly like Chuck D. I mean, like if you if you close your eyes, you would not think that this was Snap. You would think that this was a Public Enemy song, except for the fact that it may be not. But you know, he sounds people, just like Chuck D. A lot of people would be surprised to know Boat. In fact, it always surprises me that you have a pretty uh, a pretty good head for hip hop and rap from back in the day, don't you? I that do. Was like I do. It's, it, it's a, it surprises myself sometimes. It is weird because you just don't seem like the type. No. You know? No. So Mostly, m- most though. of my Never rap w- was consumed on cassette. Yeah, I would go to second time around over there in Taze Valley before it oh, became yeah. a vape shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would just get rap tapes, and I yeah. just I just put them in my Volvo, and I just listen to these guys just yell at me for like <laughs> hours at a time. It was great, good times. You know, have you ever thought about doing a rap performance and the uh, for the for the ending song of the show? Uh, well, I told you about how when I was a teacher. Uh, they used to be, you know, when I used to teach in the near the inner city, they we used to have Freestyle Friday, 
And we used to have the kids yeah. would come up and, and I freestyled in quotes, skilos, I wish. And everybody <laughs> thought I was some kind of rap god until the next day they came in on the net Monday and they're like, Mr. Shaw, you're a fraud because they realized that I was not freestyling at all. So you were you were horking. I was horking. I was horking That's, like listen, I'm working. When you're when you're when you're in it, when you're knee deep in it, you gotta come up with something. You do, you have Sometimes to think you fast. Have to do what you gotta do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's sort of the embodiment of rap in a certain way. So actually you lived up to what rap means. You freestyled <laughs> when you had no choice. Exactly. About freestyling and ripping people off. I'm gonna put that on my tombstone. <laughs> I freestyled when I had no choice. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> I love it. So thank you, Duncan, for this. Uh, it's a great article. I really enjoyed reading this one, too. It's amazing how many of these games... I mean, the Bitmap Brothers, they they built their image on standing in front of helicopters wearing sunglasses and licensing, like, uh, you know, current music into their games. And well, the so game, they'll always remember for that. Good. I mean, Xenon 2 is pretty good, and Gods is really good, I think. Uh, what's been going on over at our YouTube channel this week, Aaron? It's been a busy week. It's funny. Uh, we actually put a few, um, a lot of videos up for the for the short amount of time we've had. Um, you know, uh, last Friday after we went off the airboat, it was time for another uh, Amigo Aaron Friday night streamerama. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I still, I, I've got a, I'm going to go bananas on a company after we finish this segment. But I still haven't received my uh, power supplies for my uh, Commodore 64 or my. Uh, Atari XEGS. Mm. Uh, so it was back to the drawing board for the stream, and we did uh, more uh, arcade potpourri on the stream. So if you want to see me uh, with all our streaming buddies playing some arcade games, that that's the that's the show for you right there. I'm looking at this picture that I put in front of this because I didn't plan on posting this this early, and so I put a like a picture in there to hold the place of the video, and I never removed it. So <laughs> if you wonder why me, Pikachu, and Papa Shango are standing there, that's I thought that, that was Coco Beware. No, that's Papa Shango. Mm. Man. Like, what do you mean he's holding a skull? Why would Papa Coco hold a human skull? Well, I thought that was like his. Uh, he had the bird and he had the skull. He didn't have a bird. He's got a skull mm. in this in picture. That's Papa Shanga. Hey, he'll make you puke if you piss him off. Is that his move? Sure. Yeah, he did that to the Ultimate Warrior. You made him throw up. Wow. They yeah. televised that? Yeah. Oh, man, did they ever. Mm. Uh, he also makes you sweat blood and stuff. He's a, he's a witch doctor, man. What do you want? I would expect that. Yeah. The puking um, thing, though, that's gross. So anyway, yeah, there you go. And this Friday, I don't know what I'll be playing, Boat, so the, who knows? Um... Me and the Brent last week. Boy, did we get step into it, Boaster. Uh, we were tasked with playing games on the Fujitsu FM7 computer boat. Uh, I'd never heard of this one. And who, we found out that it's the predecessor to the FM Towns uh, mm -hmm. that, we've heard, that we've heard so much about, Boat. Mm -hmm. And the FM Towns Marty. Uh, and so we had all kinds of trouble getting this thing to work. But at the end of the day, we did get it to work. And I played uh, the FM... You know, it's amazing. I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah, go ahead. Look man. at the game that you're displaying here. Okay? This looks so far above both of the games that you guys played. I mean, this looks like a totally different system. Yeah, well, here's the thing, Boat. Uh, the FM7 is not... was uh, We had a, all kinds of trouble understanding how to make it work. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I don't deny that there are better games. There absolutely are. It's just that I, and I, I'll admit, to, I, when I picked mine, I was I was out of time. It, this was the second, my second choice. I mean, my this looks as good choice, as the Spirits Legacy. I mean, my, it's... my original choice was Dragon Busters, but I couldn't get it to run. I never got it to run, mm. and so I was like, "What can I play that I know will work?" And so I picked mine, a twenty forty nine er. Uh, and uh, Brent came up with a game uh, called Yokai something something, and I have to say, Brent found a hidden gem. Boat, uh, he really did. This game he found was a lot of fun. It doesn't look like much, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, Minor Twenty Forty Nine er was the the worst version of Minor Twenty Forty Nine I've ever it seen. It really looks horrible. It and really by the looks way, horrible. I went back. You know, we covered this on the on the Atari show mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, and I, you made a comment. 
that I'm going to hold you to here. When you said the Japanese versions of Meyer 24-Niner blow away the other versions. I don't recall saying that. You did. I'll let you did. I, I quote you. <laughs> well, so, after seeing the well, FM7 you, version. And you said the FM7 version was great. What you said. <laughs> after seeing the FM7 version, I retract yes. that. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Formally. So, anyway, if you want to see some of that sweet action, there you go. Uh, this coming week, we'll be doing games from Micropros Boat. Uh, so and they're for real this time. We're not just picking a couple Super Nintendo F16s, uh, and so I've picked a real challenge and one of so is Brent. So that'll be fun. Let's talk about this. I haven't got to see this yet, but I'm dying to see it. So uh, this both. is this is Chris Folds. That's right. You, you want to speak on this? So Chris Folds has uh, done a compilation video of some of the best, or I don't know if they're some of the best or not, but just a collection <laughs> of top racing games on the Master System. Now, if you know anything about the Master System, it is one of the most underrated consoles of all time in terms of not the fact that it didn't sell well. Maybe I should say underrated in the U.S. of A. Because it was a huge hit in, for example, Brazil, various places in South America, and a modest success in uh, in Europe and the UK. Uh, and so I am always amazed at the kind of experiences that you can have on the Master System. The quality of the games is really great. The, the version of Outrun, I mean, not only does it, you know, of course it buries the Amiga version, but it is it is pretty darn good. Just uh, aside, you know, all things aside, so. Uh, Chris covers about, uh, I don't know, about 10 games. Uh, this Little clips of each one. Um, if you are looking to see what the Master System can do, uh, this is a great way. And, of course, racing is both of our, one of our favorite genres. So uh, I'm going to have to do a Master System stream and try some of these out for real one day. You know that F1 game you're looking at? I think I, think I played that on the Wonder Swan. Really? The ARG. Yeah. yeah, I think I did. You know, that looks great. Everything about that looks awesome. You know, I... I do you think? Uh, uh, listen, I know the uh, the Nintendo buried the Master System deep beneath the earth here in the state, but I mean, some people did have the Master System. What do you think? It was a complete disaster over here. Well, I mean, did you know I mean it's one? it's all relative. I'm sure that there were more Master Systems sold than Amigas in the United yeah. States. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it, I, it, it's all yeah. relative, but Nintendo was just such a dominant force, and they leveraged, you know, sort of quasi-mafioso tactics to keep the Master System out. They would say, if you sell the Master System in your store, you cannot sell the, the Nintendo. And, of course, that... WWF. That if, like, if, if you want us to run your arena, you can't book the competition exactly. for six months. Exactly. Whatever. And so, um, but, man... The Master this game System, looks wacky. yeah. The Master <laughs> System probably, I would say, sold maybe if it sold a tenth of the amount of Nintendos, then uh, I would be very surprised. You know, it's interesting that Brazil was fond of this system, and it's because they were also remember if you'll recall, they were they were they held on to the Odyssey right uh, for right. a long time too. So salute to the Brazilians down there. They 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 they've got good taste. I agree. Anything. I agree. So, yeah, that looks great. I can't wait. Good job, Folds. Uh, he, I'm glad to see he's uh, kicking that out there. That's great. Um, just a couple more things real quick, Boat. Uh, I finally, finally managed to get out my uh, Unamiga A500 header FPGA unboxing and review. That's right. It's an unboxing, Boat, except there's no box. It's an unenveloping <laughs> in this case. Did I it come in an envelope? It didn't come in like a special it box came in or anything? an envelope, dude. Wow. Uh, I mean, it was a stiff envelope, but, you know, it's working stiff. Uh, but uh, 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 this this was the video that I was not sure I'd ever finish because I wasn't sure I could fix the Unamiga, and that's a, whole, that's a whole other story for itself. But if you're interested in the Unamiga and uh, what it is and how it works and the various difficulties I had and my overall impressions with it, uh, check this video out. Uh, it's It's been received pretty well. Uh, Tenmark stuck a, did a, a video last week. Of course, Doug really had a completely different experience than I did due to the all the wackiness. Because Doug also mounted his in a... Uh, he mounted his in a, uh, check, a checkmate case. And I actually went... And mounted mine in the A500 case, which are and it's never looked better, baby. It I mean, it looks great now, but man, boat, holy smokes, <laughs> what a trial! Uh, so if you hey, want, basically, let me ask it, you a question: yeah, What yeah. is this thing behind you on your desk? That uh, tube that, thing. You see, that looks awesome, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks like something. Well, it's not. It's a crappy. <laughs> my mom and dad were like, "Look, we got you this thing at this antique store." I'm like, "Okay," and there's tubes and crap. I'm like, "Oh, look at this! It's a crappy." 
crappy radio. Well. That's all that is. It's, it's an AM FM radio, and it's not vintage. It's not. It's not anything. It's just so. But I. I don't, and it's funny because I keep tossing it aside, and it just keeps showing up. And I, I, I go. So of all the things I've got around me, that's what you said. And that's, I can't blame you. It's right there. Yeah. I mean, it's there. It's large and in charge. Anyway, if you're interested in Young Amiga, check that out. Uh, lastly, and I didn't actually mean to release this today, but what the heck. I went ahead and did it. Me and Britt had a conversation on the pre-show, uh, uh, much like our show last week here on Amigos, about James Bond. And we had a long uh, uh, conversation about it. Uh, Brent knew a little bit more about James Bond than Boat, and Brent had some interesting comments on what his favorite J- uh, James Bond games were. You see that? That is, uh, oh, I missed it. What you were both, you were both. There it is. You were both wringing your hands in the dowdy way at the exact well, same time. I oh, love see, it. He was yelling at me. That was part of this video. Oh, he, okay. Him and his wife were screaming at me. <laughs> there it Seems is. Like he's <laughs> mocking me like a jerk because that's what he is. And his wife was bad mouthing me too. They don't realize that that's a. Uh, uh, that's just a thing. It's a accoutrement. It's a character. You know, trait. you ever you ever use Windows or the Mac, and and you double click, you do something, and it has to do. It takes a while, right? There's a little cloud that mm-hmm. pops up or mm-hmm. a little okay, a thing. That's me. Like I consider that my pause thinking. That's your spinning beach ball. That's right. bam. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we got this week, Boat. Big week. And we'll all have right. plenty well, more coming. Well, let's take a look real, real quick, Aaron, before we dive into the Amiga news at this week's, uh, or this month's, I'm sorry, High Score Amigos Challenge. So this is available uh-huh. to every member of our Discord community. We encourage everyone to take part in our monthly High Score Challenges. This month, it's California Games. Uh, right now, Hasifa is in first place. There is a scoring system where you input all of your scores on all the various events, and it runs through this very, very complex algorithm that generates your total score. Um, and uh, But uh, we want everybody to take part. So far, we got five folks in there. Uh, if you like California games or if you've never wanted to try it, this is not about the score. It's just about trying something new. So uh, feel free to pop in to the Discord, uh, take a screenshot of your score, and enter your scores in the, uh, the, old screen, uh, the, uh, the spreadsheet here. I've played this game two or three times this week, and my scores are so humiliating <laughs> that I can't bring myself to type them in. So I'm hoping... There are some events that I just don't know how to do anything on. The skateboarding, I've never been good at that state skateboarding event, Boat. I've tried for years. I, it's This game is one of those games, like, if you don't keep playing it, you forget how to do stuff. I mean, there's been times where I was better at it, you know? It's a lot like summer games or something, you know? You think you're good at it, and then you get in there and play it, and you suck. That's the way I feel, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to try it. Okay, okay. Sounds good. All right, and that's going to do it for this week's uh, site updates. You know what it's time for, Aaron. What? Oh, there he is. <laughs> it always catches me off guard. Oh, jeez. Oh. All right, Aaron. We are going to be talking about the first thing: Tank Mouse Unleashed. Aaron, you know there's a thing called 3D printers. I've heard that. They're very popular, especially they're very popular with lots of different kinds of people, but especially retro gaming people. Uh, I found that most of my friends are into 3D printing in one way or another. And uh, it's taken long enough, but a tank mouse has finally been re- uh, released, a 3D printed tank mouse. Now you can use your emulator with original feeling. I can tell you as a user of the tank mouse that that is c- the kind of original feeling that I do not want. <laughs> Uh, this is my Amiga Tank Mouse Unleashed project. Uh, you he says, hate the Tank Mouse, don't you? Well, it's, it's, is it it's, because of that shirt? Yes. That's got to be fun. I spent, I spent so much money on the design of that shirt. and still, <laughs> still has never sold a single copy. <laughs> Not a single one. No. Uh, it says, uh, he said, this, the guy made it because he has an A500 Pi mod. Um, and he wanted a, a mouse to go with it. So I guess he, he did the whole thing, you know, stick the pie in the Amiga, get the key raw going, all that stuff. Um, he says the only thing that you need is an ISY wireless mouse, which he says costs 10 euros, one screw and some glue. I guess you just pop this thing inside the casing and bam, you have a modern looking tank mouse. Now I've got a, I've got a, uh, a challenge here. All right, that looks pretty good, all right? But I would like to see, like I did the Xbox Duke controller, put the pie 
in the mouth. Mm. Then you got something. Then you got something. <laughs> you got something. <laughs> that is neat. You know, I will say one thing about the Unamiga is it lets me use like a PS2 laser mouse. Mm -hmm. My God, the difference that makes, Boat. I can't oh, yeah. tell you. I got a little taste of it with my little USB uh, adapter. But I mean, it's the it's the best. I mean, God bless the tank mouse or any of the Amiga mice. I've got several different versions. The ball mice, they suck. They're not as good. <laughs> not even close. It's it, so. you know, ball mice are one of those things. It's just really, really hard to go back after you've after you've gotten used yeah. to a laser mouse. It's totally different than a game controller, yeah. um, because a mouse works the same. You know, whether it's an old mouse or a new mouse, you expect it to work the same way. Um, I, you know, I would like to see somebody print one of these out. Uh, I know that we've got quite a few people with 3D printers in our Discord community. I'd like to see how it turns out. Yeah, that's neat. That's a good idea, too. Smart man. Aaron, WinUA 4.4.0 has been yes. released. Ooh. Yeah. There's an O in there. This is a, a big release. This thing's gotten a lot of press on the Twitter. Yeah. Um, they, they, to be honest with you, none of this stuff really applies to people like you or I. Let me read you. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to pick one of these out. GUI reset button now copies current full GUI config to active config, including options that normally can't be changed on the fly. Hmm. Yeah. If that's and the kind of thing that excites you, this is for you. This maybe is for you. Maybe you should read all these bullet points, Boat. <laughs> <laughs> I should just lists. Nothing but well, lists from now on. Know, the, I, I'm so I'll listen. When you is the ba backbone, the basis of all emulation, right? It, mm -hmm. It's it's the man, right? But there's so much crap in there that I can't figure out, and I don't want to know. Now that's one thing about the Amiga. I'm done with the emulation. <laughs> I'm not going back, man. I'll just do the simulation. I'm down. Yeah. I'm, I hear luck. you. I'm with you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up is uh, now this is this is a very interesting story that was shared with us by Mr. Pixels at Dawn. Uh, this guy, Eves Grolet, he says, Ooh. 30 years later, here are all the files from my last Amiga hard drive. Full agony source code accompanied by some prototypes I did at the end of my Amiga programming era. So this yeah. guy has basically done a dump, a data dump of all of his, his final Amiga hard drive, a free distribution on the internet. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Uh, I can't wait to see what people uh, pick out of this. This this is breaking news uh, just a couple of days ago, but I'm sure that as people extract this stuff, they're gonna come up with all kinds of neat ways to display it. Maybe they could get into agony and tinker around a little bit and make that uh, even better. Yeah. Kind of fun. Or, or maybe like even- the deluxe version or something. Maybe yeah. AGA it. Yeah, that's exactly what that game needs. It. That's exactly. <laughs> don't do anything about the horrible animation of anything other than the bird or the insane difficulty. Just add some more gradient to the sky. But, that's but what you, the game needs. Listen, I heard your diatribe the other day on that. <laughs> on, I could I was baffled and alarmed at your hatred for AGA. It does more than gradient. Come on. That's, that's all it does. Advanced gradient architecture. That's off. what it stands for. Coming soon, Aaron. That's pretty good, but still. Wrong. There is a new Kickstarter in town, and it's by our boy, Neil, Retro Man boy. Cave. <laughs> yeah. He is making a book, because what's more retro than a paper book, Aaron? He's taken <laughs> the scripts from his uh, Retro Tea Break uh, yeah. series of podcasts and have compiled them into book form so you can read them at your leisure. And I've gotta say, Aaron, I am a big fan of the design of this book. I love the colors, I uh -huh. love the page layout, there's enough white space in there. I've been privy to many a kickstarted book before, Aaron. Uh -huh. These guys don't know anything about book design most of the time. They no. don't know anything about page layout, they don't know about proper font spacing. Mm -hmm. Neil. You know Neil, he is a man of exacting specifications. And he he has done his research, he knows what's up. I am really looking forward to seeing this thing in real life, Aaron. This thing has not yet been launched. Uh, it says that uh, it has 371 followers that are waiting for it to be released. If you wanna get on board and get on, especially if there's some early bird pricing involved, which I don't know if there is or not, you should follow this Kickstarter page so you can be notified as soon as it becomes live. That way you can take advantage of whatever early bird pricing there might be. Neil is, Neil is such a personality and he's so, he, the, he's so popular that he will, he will get this funded just by uh, the, his sheer uh, shared love and devotion. Everyone will be chipping in to help out Neil get this thing done. And the book does look good. Mm -hmm. 
these tea breaks have been pretty. Hey, we were on one uh, tea break, as I recall. Wasn't that thing we were? Did that one of the things we did? Uh, no, I think, think that think that, that was, was. I think that was something different. I don't think we we these guys are like the real people. Oh, I know There's that. Al Lowe. I'm just saying it was a daytime like short version. There's the, the one guy who claimed that he coded that demo, but he actually didn't. That's that should be the number one <laughs> chapter. He <laughs> should be on the cover. But the book looks class. It's gonna be awesome. I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Good for Neil. Next up, Aaron. Reformation 4. This is the fourth installment of the Reformation C64 and Amiga soundtrack remake album series. Okay. This is another one of these music projects. Uh, Yeah. This guy is, uh, he's basically uh, creating albums full of old music, releasing those albums, and they are always successful. This guy has gone over and above his uh, goal of $28,000. He's released $32,765. All it takes is 25 pounds to get the full album download, full quality FLAC and MP3 digital download of the complete reformation album. Now wait a minute here. Hold on a second. Twenty five pounds, and you get to download the tracks. You, you get, get to a download the copy. tracks. Thirty five pounds, about forty four bucks. You get the double CD. Woo! Wait a minute. Twenty five. So almost forty do- American dollars. You get nothing but the digital download. Listen, man. Holy! I mean, listen, but you can play more about these than anybody. You surely are going to say let that go without saying something. I'm not going to lie to you. I will not be buying this thing. That's, that's way a lot too, of money. That's way too much money. But this guy apparently has a following. I'm not saying the music's not good. Yeah. Oh um, my God. I didn't pay that much money for the Queen double album greatest hits when I bought it. Right, right. And I mean, if you're talking about quality music, you got the Queen double album greatest hits versus, you know, C64 and Amiga music. Which one is worth more to you? Well, I mean, don't I like C64 music a lot. There's a podcast that does nothing but put that out. I listen to it. It's great. In the car, you know, you're bebopping around. Yeah, what this, I mean, what this guy does is, you know, he takes the... Uh, these these classic titles and i'm sure that these are um i'm sure that these are you know he he has to pay for the rights for these things all of that stuff and then he basically recreates them it's like remastering but even going a step further where he's actually like using different equipment and like better equipment to record different samples and things like that and uh and so i admire the work that goes into this thing yeah. And I mean, if you are hardcore into this scene, I mean, maybe maybe thirty two bucks for you know for some digital downloads isn't isn't a lot, but I, it just it's not my bag, man. I mean, like I would get I would pay ten bucks for something like this, you know, right. nine ninety nine. It's yeah. a good price the, point. Or five or ten bucks for the digital copy, right? But 20, thirty or forty bucks, <laughs> no sir. Yeah. Unless it was like uh, uh no, I can't think of anything. Sorry. <laughs> But I'm sure it's going to be great. I mean, I have no doubt. Yeah. Not, I don't want to kill the guy. I'm just no, saying. No. And uh, finally, Aaron, this is not exactly Amiga related, but it is C64 related. We want to give a big shout out to our buddy, Rob O'Hara. Sprite Castle Black. is back. This is my favorite C64 podcast. You know, it would take a lot to get me to actually want to fire up the C64, given my hatred of the system. What? You hate the C64? But Why? This is this is a podcast that really makes me want to take the keyboard out of my non-working C64 and put it into the slot of my working C64 to have one working C64. Sprite Castle is a, uh, it's it's basically one man's take on his favorite C64 games from his youth. If you haven't listened to any of Rob O'Hara's podcasts before, he is one of the few guys that can that can manage to carry a one-man show. Doing a one-man show is not easy. Uh, lots of people have tried, lots of people have failed. Rob has a great voice for radio, he's got a great personality, and he keeps things moving. I highly recommend you check out Sprite Castle if you've not already. Aaron, you're a fan of Sprite Castle, aren't you? Rob does the things that we have never really done, Boat. He writes the show. Mm-hmm. He practices the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he has a script. <laughs> His shows are cunningly designed. Uh, I love Jack, Jack Flack. Hey, if you haven't, if you, I know we've pushed him before, but if you've never listened to, you don't know Flack, uh, which, uh, gosh, keep him coming. I'd love to see him make more of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is a uh, top shelf. Top shelf. I go back and listen to the old ones all the time, Boat. I re- I've got to memorize mm-hmm. the Ninja episode. Oh, yeah. Episode, I can tell you beat by beat what happens episode, in the Ninja episode. Yeah. His hacker <laughs> episodes, the Creek. The skateboard. You 
the, yeah, uh, uh, the, his cars, mm -hmm. his the thing about printers, mm -hmm. the thing about flop, uh, floppy uh, parties, copy parties. He's got. He's written a several books. He's. A, so, I mean, this guy's a legitimate. He's not some schlup. He's an actual writer. Like he with published works. Right. College grad, a recent college graduate, Bode. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so Sprite Castle, just another uh, jewel in the crown of his various web outings. Uh, it just lots. Of, he and his stuff's real diverse too. Uh, now I want to get back to something you said. The C sixty four is awesome. All right, I've got one right here. You can see the little corner of it sticking out right here. It's awesome. You've got the same little gimmick I've got. I do. Cars, I bought one. Right? Okay, so don't give me this crap that you don't like the CC4 because that's a lie. You do like them. Just because you love the the Atari, don't badmouth the C64. But, man, that's the way it is. If you listen, like you're one retro deal. system, you have to hate all the others from the same no. generation. Why? You didn't read the rule book, man. I, I throw out the rule book, Boat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And finally, next week, uh, 10 days from today, Amigathon 2020. It's here. It's ready to go. This is uh, our fourth annual Amigathon, uh, starting at noon UTC, that is 8 a.m. local time here in West Virginia. Uh, this is featuring you and I, Retro Man Cave, Amiga Bill, and you, the listener, in our Amiga Live segment. We've also got an Amiga Trivia Challenge and a D-Paint and Mod competition. This is going to be an action-packed day, by far the most action-packed day of all our Amigathons. Hopefully the action will not be me running to Walmart to buy a new cable modem this year. I uh, talked to Amiga Bill uh, just a few days ago. He's very excited. Uh, he told me he's going to attempt to, live on the air, he's going to try to beat that reshooter game mm. uh, uh, right there, uh, which was one of his year goals. Uh, he's, he's pumped. He's jacked. Bill is always jacked. You know, he's always pumped up. Yeah, he Richard is. Richard came smooth as glass. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's Full like chocolate and peanut butter. Pillow, but yeah, yeah. And so you know when he brings uh, brings the uh, uh, the good vibes down, he's going to be ringing that uh, register for the charity. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tremendous. I'm looking forward to it. And then, of course, me and you are going to stumble in. <laughs> <laughs> we are neither cool nor smooth nor energetic. None of those. We'll None of those words. In. But it, we'll still do our best, but <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. And it, actually, it's true. Edvin, uh, Edvin mentions, or I'm sorry, Wishbone mentions that it's actually a baldathon. No <laughs> hair allowed at Amigathon this year. <laughs> hey, before we move into the main event, but I, 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 I because you were also talking about CC4, I want to bring it up. Uh, Tinmark covered a CC4 game this week called Shadow over Hawksmill. This game looks great. Did you see this game? I Holy have not moly. looked at it yet. I did see this video pop up. Now, I've heard about this game. You know I'm a big HP guy, mm -hmm. right? I'm demanding a port of this to the Amiga. They've got to do it. For So for 50 bucks, man, you get, the, uh, you get the box, you get the game, you get the game with cartridge, by the way, all right? You get stickers, you get uh, you get all sorts of little buttons. Man, that's a nice looking cart too. That Look is, at that label know, with the dude. man. I can't believe it. you get a you get a manual. You know, you get all kinds. Of, you get an overlay for the keyboard. Wow, though. that's so cool. Right, these guys put the feelies in. I don't know who I don't know who's put. Uh, this was at Cytronic was the outfit that published it. Uh, this game looks really good. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, this thing looks really fun. So. Uh, kudos to Doug for, for putting this up there, but also kudos to people making this. I would love to see a game like this. I would like to see this game actually come come over to the Amiga. That'd be awesome. That so would be nice. I want to mention that because this looked good. It's Cytronic. Doug mocks their uh, logo for being like the Psygnosis logo, and I think it's a loving tribute. I will mm. say, I think they were trying to rip them off, you know. I think it's a loving it, tribute. I mean, it's definitely, it's a loving tribute. Yeah. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's Amiga News, Aaron. Let's talk a little bit about Super Hang On. Super Hang On. Now, have you, be, okay, anyone that knows anything about Super Hang On, it's a motorcycle game, boat, as you know. Um, uh, N probably knows this game from the arcade, right? The uh, why? Because you actually get up on a motorbike mm -hmm. and you go to work, don't you? Oh, Aaron, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
before we before we get into it, I've I've had this thing in my lap the whole show. We gotta <laughs> we gotta unbox this thing, or I'm gonna forget. So you gotta do it right now. Okay, right we'll now. Make the screen big again. Let's yeah. See, let's let's make the screen there. big. There we go. Ignore, I, I didn't talk about the arcade game. Just ignore that. Okay, so this comes to us. Let's see. There's a note in here, or just some good stuff. Been in your lap, huh? Yeah, I put it right in the lap. Okay, nothing else in there. This comes to us from the UK. I see the Queen's face on there. Uh, what... We've got an Amiga Force sticker. I'm going to put that on the PC case. Oh, a sticker. Okay. Yeah, man. This is vintage, too. Uh, it says, if at first you don't succeed, cheat. Yeah. <laughs> That's my credo right there, Boat. Uh, we have an ad for, uh, Sim I guess Simulant sent us this. This is a, a retro Wi-Fi adapter. You can get your vintage computer online. Hmm. And okay. the main event here, Aaron. Should have... Uh, well wrapped, eh? Yeah, well wrapped. This is a... Um, it's a disk drive. Look mm -hmm. at this. This is a... Uh, it says it's marked with... Is that with, an Amstrad or it's something? A, what is that? I think that this is an, an Amstrad CPC uh, compact floppy disk. Amsoft, yes. And oh, it says, you're kidding me. So that's an SD in that thing? Wait. What? What? No, what? It's, it's a floppy disk? Yeah, it's, it's one of the it, wacky ones. Okay, yeah, I yeah, it's you. one of the wacky floppy disks. Uh, this, it says Amigos Files on here, so maybe he's put some good stuff on here. Um, this is the first time that I've ever seen one of these weird size floppies. Have you seen one of these before, Aaron? I've only on video. How's, how, what's the weight like on that thing? Buddy? It's hefty. It's yeah. hefty. I would, I would say that it weighs more than I... There's, there's some additional mechanisms up top. Now, uh, did, did Simulant send a how to repair Amstrad manual along with that <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's what's written on the desk. Right, <laughs> so right. Gotta... That's These awesome. Are, yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Simulant. We appreciate this. It's a, a, another curio for our, my cabinet of curiosities. I'll take the sticker. Yeah. That's for me. Absolutely. All right, Aaron. Now we go. So, Boat, let me ask you a question. <laughs> have you ever sat on one of these in the arcade? I have, many a time. Uh -huh. In fact, the last time that I sat on one of these, if you go, if you're on 70, going towards 68, uh, like if you're traveling from DC to West Virginia, you on Western Maryland, far Western Maryland, as soon as you, it's almost as soon as you cross, there is a exit called Campground Drive. Right. And off that exit, there is a retro game store, not unlike the one that just closed down here in Milton. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, the one that just closed down in Milton, you know what it is now, don't you? I don't. Vape shop. Oh, are you kidding me? You another know how we needed things? another rape shop? Oh my god, shop how many around. of those things are there? <laughs> I was driving by there yesterday and uh and I saw that. That, that sucks. Yeah. 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 So I, I hate to hear that. Well, uh so one thing about one thing that made this game, I mean, in the are popular in the arcades anyway, was the fact that you could that you could get up on this sucker. Now, um you had another version of this boat where you sort of like had handlebars. You ever seen that one? Yeah, uh, I, I've not played that one, but I've seen the. It seems like whenever this would show up in arcades, it would always be the Leany. Yeah, the, the Leany was better. Mm -hmm. the hand, it's funny, I can't. T this is just a side note. I can't tell you how many times I've almost bought one of these, the, the handlebar one. But I did. But again, what's it's kind of cool. But I mean, if you don't have the, if you can't do the thing, right? You, what do you do? So of course, the original game in the series was Hang On, and this was Super Hang On. Now, the, the people that made Super Hang On, it's an all-star cast boat in the arcade. Uh, this was developed by Sega's AM2. You know them. Mm -hmm. They're great. And uh, this was a game that was very, very, very popular uh, back in the day. Designed by Yo Suzuki. Right? So, a big name at Sega boat. Um, the Again, if you haven't played the arcade version, you get on a, a bike. It's a bike racing game. And it's got a it's got a bike that you lean left and right, and as you lean it left and right, your guy on the screen will lean left and right. Pretty simple. Uh, if you play the handlebar version, you just you know handlebars. It's, will yeah, make you one go of those right. things. Lame. This, like Paperboy. I get this one in the arcade and Hang On. Confu they're sort of similar, of course. Hang it, On with the original. Yeah, you know, I to be honest with you, I wouldn't know if I played Hang On or Super Hang On in the arcade because they they look. 
I don't recall Hang On looking that much worse than Super Hang I can't, On. To be honest with you, I, you know, they're uh, to me they're. I mean, I know they're not, but to mm-hmm. me, I, in my mind, they're interchangeable. Because when you when you go to play them, you just go oh, look at that, you know. But I think Super Hang On was. I don't think Hang On had the ability to. I don't think it ever had the leany bike. I could be wrong, uh, but it may have. So anyway, a pretty popular game uh, boat uh, back back in the day, and of course it got ported. Uh, to 400 million uh, mach- uh, different uh, machines. I should mention that this thing uh, came out in the arcade way back in April of 87. All right, so this thing was uh, primed in the Amiga era to come out for the Amiga. Uh, I, I, by the way, this apparently the Spectre version of this is highly touted. Did, we, never, we didn't play this on the Spectrum. I can't remember. Did we no. ever play this on the Spectrum? I, I don't think so. This was, I remember, you know, there are a lot of games that have this this motif. Hang on, might have been the first one. Yeah. Uh, when I was at Snowshoe, which is a West Virginia uh, ski resort last yeah. last winter, um, they had a game called it was it was called like Super Endurance something something. It was another Japanese was it Super Enduro. Was it? No, that was that's a different. That's a car game. Uh. This is uh, man. I'm trying to think of what it was called, but it, it had this real elaborate plastic marquee like the rows up in front of the things and stuff yeah so i think that these motorcycle racing games were pretty popular do you you ever watch this stuff i no not really i mean i've seen it i'm like look at that guy's knees on the ground yeah that's once you get past the guy's knee being on the ground it's like what what do you got Uh, when they wipe out the guys get like go in the air like uh they got shot out of a can and legs and arms (laughs) flailing kimbo yeah Uh, del morte mentions that uh, he thinks these games could be linked I can tell you that they may have been a like, but I never played a linked one. It, I always saw these as uh, games by themselves. Mm-hmm. Although Sega did like to do that with their racing games. Um, so <clears throat> let's flash forward to this version. Uh, this uh, Super Hangar released in '88 on the uh, on the uh, Amiga and was developed by Software Studios. Uh, uh, strangely, so the the guy the guys behind this thing. Uh, they, it's funny, they almost had like the fellow that programmed this thing basically there was not going to be an Amiga version of this from what I read and he sort of did it and they were like hey that looks that looks pretty awesome uh, the, the fellow that did it his, he was called ZZKJ uh, I've got his actual name written down here somewhere oh here it is Z- uh, Zara ZK Johannes uh, on the Amiga he coded the Harley Davidson game which I like that game uh, Power Drift, uh, Super Monaco Grand Prix, and Smash TV. So he did he did some pretty big titles on here, but I guess he was uh, milling around with an engine that would play this game and and showed it uh, showed it off, and some people were like, "Yeah, this looks great." <laughs> so <laughs> because he had done the uh, he had done the Atari ST version, so he got they were like, "Yeah, do it, man." So they and so they put some money into it, and here we go. We've got Super Hang on for the uh, for the Amiga. So, uh, again, this game came out in '88, and you only had one. You only had one disc, one player. What do you do? Uh, you have a series of. Uh, you have all the continents have a series of tracks, mm-hmm. right? You've got and the most easy tracks. I think it goes Africa. Yeah, here we go. Africa, then uh, Asia, then America, and then Europe. Those are the, from easy to hard, mm-hmm. and each one has a different set of stages. Africa is the shortest, Europe is the longest, and what I, and the stages are basically checkpoints that you go through. Right. And your and your job is to race against other racers to, to uh, go to these checkpoints and finish the race. That's the game. It's your basic racing game. When you go through a checkpoint, you get more time, a la Outrun, right? Uh, for example, uh, what made this game sort of unique and, and on the Amiga was. Uh, so obviously, we don't have a motorcycle to get on, but what you could use was the mouse. Mm-hmm. We did have a mouse, and so you gave, they gave you the option of mouse control or joystick control. And they even had a uh, on the uh, on the main screen. You've got a way to kind of, I guess, sort of calibrate your mouse. You well, know? not really. I mean, the, I tried calibrating it. Says it it yeah. says that, but you really have to like move your mouse a lot, even more. And again. When you're playing this on emulation with a laser mouse, it may yeah. feel a little bit different um, versus when you're playing with a ball mouse. But I felt like the amount of movement that I had to even be able to trigger the calibration tool was too much. Uh, if you're playing this with a laser mouse, I mean, 
the this I'm just going to say this is what makes this game stand out for me is the mouse control because um, there's really if you're playing this with a joystick it's you're not playing it right in my opinion uh, I've, I've played it ex almost exclusively with the gamepad I, but I did play it with the mouse you get bit. so much of a better feel for the track um, when you're playing with a mouse and it really adds to the immersion I mean nothing's going to be as immersive as you know being on a bike and leaning left and right but yeah. I felt like I was so much more involved in the in in the way that the bike was leaning by using the mouse. Um, uh, and like I, I agree with you to a certain degree. I mean, you do. I will say the mouse is as close you can, as you could come to simulating the bike being on the bike. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, and um, uh, like I said, the the you you can configure the mouse, and uh, if if you're using a ball mouse on a real Amiga, you'll probably want to do that. But I found just leaving things as they were with a laser mouse. I mean, just the slightest motion of your hand will make your bike respond. I actually, I thought it worked pretty well. I thought, I actually tried this with, on, I've tried the, uh, the uh, 1200, the uh, Cloanto, and I also played this on the Unamiga. I tried this on three different platforms. And they're really, you know, there wasn't a huge difference. Uh, uh, but... Uh, I, I got used to, I, you know, I had trouble, this game, when you, one of the things I got, always have trouble with, and it's funny, I played the arcade version too, and it's sort of the same way, is you can get caught uh, in these corners to the point where you always have to stop to get back on the track or you're going to hit an object. You know what I'm saying? You get you get sort of hung in the corners, and it it, it, it slows you down so much, and this game has very, it leaves very little room for error uh, in, in, these, in making these gates. In fact, I would be having really good runs and if you have one little, if you have a series of screw ups, let's say three on a stretch, even if you've got a good amount of time built up, you could lose it easily, mm -hmm. which happened to me quite a bit. Uh, but I, you know, anyway, so you got to, you got your choices of joystick or mouse, and you may enjoy one or the other. I like, I ended up putting the joystick, which I I didn't use joystick, I used a gamepad. I put the gamepad on the highest sensitivity. That was one thing you had to do. Mm. When I did that, I, I had better time. It's possible that it's possible that I didn't do that, and that's why I had better luck with the mouse. Yeah. Well, also again, I'm using I'm using one of these, so I'm not wasn't using a joystick on these. Mm -hmm. So. Well, you're not an animal. Well, no. Hey, I like them both. Um, so once you once you select which control mechanism you want to use, uh, you then get to select your tune. Yeah. A la Outrun, you get four tunes. I was partial to the first the default tune boat. And the last tune, but all the tunes are okay. I saw some people talking uh, in uh, on the Lemon forums or the Lemon little comment section about uh, how these tunes were sort of let down by the Amiga because they couldn't play them as well as the arcade, but they should have been able to. Right? Mm. I sort of agree with that in a little bit. I mean, I think the tunes sound fine. They're great tunes. Mm -hmm. We can both agree on that. I mean, they're excellent tunes, particularly the first one. I think it's really good. I like the last one too. And one of the ones, one of the other two, has this synthesizer solo in the middle of it. But it's really awesome. It's like I just thought that was great. But I just like that one part. Mm. Uh, but uh, I thought the sounds, I thought the songs were pretty good. But having played the arcade version, the arcade version definitely has better tunes. What did you think? Well, uh, first of all, there's music during the racing, so yeah. automatically, it's great. I okay. thought about that when I was playing this. I thought number two, you can choose any one of four tunes to play during the racing. Okay, where are you at, Lotus? Where are you at? Hey, I, I, I can't say you're wrong. You know, and this came out in '88 too, so it's yeah. not like this came one out in '95. Um, don't give me the f anyway. Uh, you don't I'm have to tell me. I'm right there with you, pal. I'm with you on that one. Uh, uh, but so what did you think of the tunes that you got to hear? I thought they were great. You know, they weren't, um, to me, you know, the gold standard is Outrun. Like I can sit here and I can sing every single Outrun song to you right now. Um, they, I don't think that they were as memorable as the Outrun tracks, but they were serviceable. They got you fired up, you know? So in the arcade, you just don't think the arcade version of the music is as good as the arcade version Exactly, of Outrun. exactly. Yeah, I, now, I'm not as familiar. I didn't actually go and play the main version. I should have, just to compare it. Um, yeah. To see what it sounded like, um, but I didn't have any complaints about the music. I I, uh, I wonder if they didn't have to. I mean, the music I thought was pretty fairly close. It wasn't perfect, but they may. I thought they may have had to peel a little bit of it off just to have that playing while it ran, because they, again, it's something you don't see that often. So, but anyway, once you pick your tune, or you can pick no tune. By the way, if you hit the space mm -hmm. bar, you get no music, which mm -hmm. that's I appreciate that. Yep. 
then you're then you're off and running. Uh, this is one of those uh, deals where you hit up to accelerate, and uh, uh, when you start this this game does have one annoyance. And, and, and by the way, it's exactly the same in the arcade that annoyed me there. At the start gate, you're lined up with all the other uh, bikers. And when the when the green light comes on, the other bikers shoot off like at warp speed mm-hmm. and just leave you sitting there like an idiot. And then yeah. you've got to spend the rest of the race. I always hated that. I hate any car game where everyone well, else takes off. I'll like tell that. I'll tell you the reason why they did that is because this is not really a race. You know, they, right. they the bikers take off because you're going to be passing an infinite number of bikers as you try and yeah. do the time trial. I almost wish this was set up like turbo. Uh, remember when you played it the other night, mm-hmm. uh, where you just get credit for you get credit uh, for passing. Yeah, that, I think that I think that'd be a much better play mechanic for this race. Mm-hmm. You know, because really, like you said, you're not racing; you're effectively just passing guys. Right. At least if you did it that way, you could have a tangible number of racers you'd pass, and you could feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, you know, what I'm saying. Oh yeah, as, I'm with as you. As opposed to just feeling because the check, I found the uh, uh, the checkpoints in this. Uh, were again, they were really tough. I mean, you could there was little room for error. I would much rather just pass guys and got point credit for that. But I mean, that's you can't. Ch- that's the way it was in the arcade. So I'm not going to hold that against the immediate. No, no. What did you think about the visuals in this thing, Boat? This is right up at the top. I mean, the, you know, I don't think that anything looks smoother than Lotus in terms of the frames. Yeah. But um, but this this plays extremely well. Uh, the courses are tough. I think they're too tough. I think the basic courses should be easier. I was never able to complete a race in this game. I could get to the third stage of the first race, and that's where I, that's where I, that's where I dropped it. Uh, and that's on the basic track. Um, but uh, you know, I think that it, of course it's 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 choppy, but it's not any less choppy than any other game from this time period. I mean, think about it, '88. This is really one of the games that you could honestly say in 1988, I'm playing a computer game on the most cutting edge home system that there is. In 1988, I can't think of any home system that could produce a gameplay experience like this. Right. Um, it's funny, I, when I when I loaded this up, because of course, I've, this is a game I've played plenty of times, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, when I loaded it up, and I hadn't played it for a while, I had to say I was sort of disappointed in the way it looked. Uh, just because it's so stark, I mean, there's it's just there's a lot of emptiness, and you see the same. It's this is like they saw they did outrun after they did this, and they made improvements. Well, it's, I don't. I mean, if you play if you play Lotus, it's not as if it's a cornucopia of settings. Well, no, but I'm not. I'm not comparing this to Lotus. I'm talking about the. I'm talking the, uh, just the, the the way this is set up because the arcade version. I loaded it up, and it's very similar. Mm-hmm. It's sort of stark. I mean, if you play Outrun, they've got a lot more interesting scenery, you mm-hmm. know, scattered around. This one not so much, mm-hmm. uh, and and I think that's just the, the evolution of of the of the arcade games, you know. Well, Outrun uh, so, came out before this, but what's that? Outrun came out before this. Did it come out before yeah. this? Okay, yeah. well then I've got no excuse for them because it, it is stark. Uh, you know the uh, you see a lot, you know the same thing just repeated over and over. Mm-hmm. So if you're if you're looking at it, I, I I mean visually I think the gameplay is, is there. I just don't think it's that attractive to look at, frankly. But again, I can't hold that against it too much because the arcade's very similar. The arcade has better looking backgrounds, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but the uh, uh, but not by much. It's not mm-hmm. like it's a huge uh, leap. The arcade, the, the your biker, and the the, the scenery is a little larger, but it's not a ton different, you know. They did a good job. I mean, having it because I was working on a video stacking these right up against each other, and they're actually—I mean—it stands right up to the arcade in, in a lot of ways. It's not yeah. as smooth. Yeah, you know, this is I mean, this is one of these games that, um, just like Shadow of the Beast, where you know if you're looking at a store window or something like that, and you're watching a demo of this thing, you're like, man, this is the future. You know? Yeah. This reminds me. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of this that reminds me of, of like a, a Genesis game. It's, oh which yeah. Is a, that's a compliment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, uh, well, the Genesis you know, bread and butter was, of course, you know, Sega's arcade titles. So. Right, right, right. So, um, that much said, uh, if and I'm judging this, and this is sort of goes for the ga- both games, the arcade and the Amiga version. Uh, the uh, different stages uh, might as well be. They could say we're on the moon because that was irrelevant. Like in, in the Amer- in the North yeah. American stage, you start off in like it looks like you're. Uh, in the in the deep desert or somewhere. I mean, they they have nothing to do with anything. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. I mean, they, you know, it, and so that's disappointing. Yeah, you know? I, I agree with you. And, and I, I know there's a limitation with when we are moving this stuff as quick as you are, but it's just I'd like to have seen better scenery mm-hmm. or more varied. 
Uh, and one of the things about this game that always struck me is it's just aside from the fact that what you said, yes, it gets difficult. And I'm not the best at it uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, it's just a lot of the sameness to it. I mean, at the at the uh, you remember that uh, handheld game I got you where you drive a little car on the uh, oh yeah the, the, the Tommy track. game. This is mm-hmm. a lot like that. It's just the same scenery and the same things well, over and over. I think and you're you're sort of, of being unfair when you. Well, I mean, it to but I'm like talking about it, there's just it's the same thing over and over. There just doesn't seem to be enough variance to me to make this thing. Well, it, it, it's back. it's the racing equivalent of a dungeon crawler. You know, this is the racing equivalent of Dungeon Master or some garbage like that, where it's like oh, it's the same it's tiles say. that you're looking at over and over again. The only difference is that you're not constantly banging your head into the wall when you play this game. Yeah. Now, I suppose if you're a real good hand at it. You know, and you find that going around the curves the fun, like that's the game for you. Well, yeah, of course that's even the game. game. The thing is, even on a game like Pole Position, where you, okay, they say, here's your track, okay? There's a hairpin turn in, 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 uh, uh, on, right at the end of the side, right? Mm-hmm. You know it's coming, and every, every lap, you're like, okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. In this game, there is no, you don't really see a track. Right. You know, it just goes on. Yeah. So you can't even have fun with that like sure. okay comes the wacky part well it, 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 it's, it's all wacky mm-hmm. you know it's and so i kind of like it more i don't like these games of this setup where they just sort of endlessly go uh, yeah and i think that that's a personal thing and i yeah. i agree with you but there are people that like that there's a name for this kind of racing where it's just a start and an end point and you're not going around in laps yeah. i think uh you know watching it um from a spectator's perspective is if there was a way to do that in this game maybe it would be more interesting because you're not seeing the same thing over and over again but part of the fun of racing games is knowing what's coming up being able to anticipate hairpin turns and things like that and reacting to it right i don't know if they now I've, i've seen the races of this type before with the motorcycle guys but I don't think I've ever seen any where they just go on from one point to another. They're almost always on a closed track, aren't they? they, I, they I, I'm not as I, you know. I just don't know enough about the sport. Can you imagine? Here you are on one of these bikes. These days go like what was it, 280 kilometers? Incredibly an hour, fast, yeah. And you're just there like, okay, there's the road. <laughs> <laughs> go across go the for country. It. It's yeah. like, are you kidding it, me? That does seem dangerous. <laughs> Plus the fact that you something else in this game, you just re run into other racers all the time. And everyone's cool. Which Everybody's I get, cool with it. The same way, but I mean, in real life, if you've touched an ant, right, or like uh, someone dropped a toothpick, you're going to go flying off your bike. Attacks, yeah, you'd be killed, brutally killed. Uh, so there you go. Uh, you know, something else I wanted to mention about this as we go over uh, the uh, particulars here. The music on this done, with, with this game was done by an outfit called the Source mm. Boat. I guess they were a bunch of guys that did some music for stuff. And the only Amiga stuff that they did, from what I could find, was something called Euro Soccer 88. And here's one for you. Peter Beardsley's International Soccer. They were they did the music on that one, too. So okay. there you go. Um, end of the day, Boat, I thought it was a pretty good game. I mean, this is a pretty highly touted game. I thought it was okay. This is a solid, solid racing game. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many motorcycle racing games there are on the Amiga. Um, I don't think I've ever played another one, but even if you combine car racing games and uh, and motorcycle racing games, I would easily put this one in the top ten. What was that other game we covered? It was a motorcycle game that you play with the mouse. Um, I'm trying to think what the name of it was. We covered it years and years ago, uh, and I thought it was a pretty decent No second game. prize. No second That's prize. It. Thank you, Duncan. I that it had a name that didn't tell you what it was. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, so you you like this one more than that one? Didn't oh, you? geez, I, I'd, I'd have to go. go I'd have to go back and try it again. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Well, uh, the reviews for this thing, uh, boat, were uh, pretty favorable. Uh, you know, it's funny. Again, this is one of the big tippity top racing games. But I mean, I, I I sort of agree with the reviews for this for the most part. Lemon gave it a seven point six eight. Uh, Amiga actually gave it an eighty percent. Amiga Computing gave it an eighty nine. Uh, AUI gave this a 10 out of 10. So they loved it. Oh my gosh. Look, that's the Australian one. They loved it. Uh, Commodore User gave it an 89. And The One gave this an 85. And Your Amiga gave it a 73. I would put this somewhere in the mid to low 80s. Mm-hmm. If, I was, yeah. if, I, if I was a reviewer. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with um, you. Do I think this is... I, and I know you mocked uh, Lotus 2 for not having music. And, and 
which is fine. And what makes it more infuriating is that Lotus has awesome music when you're not racing. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it. Yeah. But that said, I, I don't put this in the same class as Lotus. No, no, nothing's and, in the uh, same. I mean, just from a sheer gameplay perspective, nothing's in, nothing on the Amiga is in the same class as Lotus. One thing to consider: this is an OCS title that came out early on the Amiga. And this, you you nailed it when you said this is a showpiece title from you know back in that at that point that this is one you would want to break out and be like here you go, you know show me something else that's playing this you don't have it, mm-hmm. uh, so I think it's a good title. Uh, I looked this up on the eBay uh, Boaster. Uh, the uh, you can get this got budget releases to beat the band as you can imagine the compilations and whatnot. Uh, you can get one of the budget releases between seven and twenty three bucks. A lot of the budget releases are those really small boxes, you know. Yeah, yeah, the Hit Squad at all. If you want the big dog, the big dog, the full boxed version of this, I only saw one. I bet it's going to cost you. I hadn't seen any sell, but I saw one for sale. If you're in Germany and you've got three hundred American dollars sitting around, that's what this guy's asking for it over there. But of course, you never know; he could be fishing. And just for fun. I looked up what you can get a a working Super Hang on arcade machine for. Now, I can tell you, back in the day, you could get these things all day long. Mm-hmm. The handlebar version, you could get all day long, and they were get. I know I could have got one for a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. easy, maybe less. Uh, the cheapest one I could find now, and this is the cool version with the bike. Mm-hmm. It's still not bad. Seven hundred seventy-five bucks. Yeah, not too bad. If you got the room for it, and I can tell you, these things weigh a quarter ton. Yeah, by the way. getting them in and out of your house is going to be a challenge. Yeah, you just get some of your buddies, some of your dumber pals to come over and help <laughs> you. So, what? Do, how do we do a Discord on this one, buddy? We get any action? We got a lot of action this week, Aaron. We'll kick things right. off with Paul, aka Hermski. He writes a Herm Firm eight out of ten. My sort of game is sim racing is my go-to multiplayer modern gaming experience. Super Hang On was on top of its game back in the day with stunning graphics, sound, and game mechanics. Although being a time-based game, I would have preferred it to be more race-based, allowing for a more competitive experience. Mm-hmm. The endless stream of AIs takes away its competitive racing environment. Can you imagine the fun if Super Hang On was multiplayer? A tad premature for esports, I guess. Yeah. Lord that Super- would be awesome. It would be. Uh, Lord Soup writes, as good as OutRun should have been, although not my favorite racer on the Amiga, I can appreciate that it's a great conversion and bike fanatics will have a blast, hence the high score, 8 out of 10. Frodo and L writes, are we sure this is on the Amiga? Music playing throughout the game, good graphics. (laughs) Music playing throughout the game, good graphics and control in a racing game. What's happening here? Great game that is missing just one thing, a multiplayer option, 8.5 out of 10. Ricky DeRocher asks, as already stated, everything that OutRun should have been, and it's proof that arcade conversions don't have to stink. Not as much, not as smooth as Lotus, but what is? Overall, it's the best Amiga arcade racer of the 1980s, 8 out of 10. Jason Warrens writes, superb, 8 out of 10. Pixels of Dawn writes, I don't have a vast amount of experience with Super Hang On in the arcade, but I really enjoyed playing it here. Graphically good, although it could be smoother but I did have to turn the joystick sensitivity up to max to make it anywhere near playable. Yep. The, the real shame is that they couldn't, put it toge- they couldn't put together a better soundtrack using the Amiga sound hardware. Absolutely legendary tunes reduced, reduced just to just okay versions. Nice touch to allow mouse control though, seven out of 10. And finally, Chris Folds writes, a solid conversion of the arcade game. Like the arcade game, is lacking in longevity, however, which becomes even more apparent in the home. Talk marks for graphics, music, and sound effects showing that with some effort, the Amiga can do it, and having mouse control for that analog feel is a nice touch. Seven out of 10. Yeah, I, th- I think a lot of those people touched on some of the same points we made. You know, when it comes to the tunes, though, I mean, the tunes are, are still pretty good. And I would wonder if the, I, I have to wonder if there was some reason that they just well we've heard plenty of subpar music on here so I mean a lot it's not often that the Amiga's music was pushed to the limit you right. know I, right. we have no doubt that it could have played what the arcade did mm-hmm. yeah yeah all right well as we wrap things up Aaron uh, I want to thank all the fine folks that are watching us live in the stream right now in the chat we got Amiga Bill in the house another TT viewer. Atten, Bilkers, Bitstorm, Buck Owens, Commander Root, Delamort78, Duncan Styles, Edvin Helland, 
Electric Longboard, Frodo, Gegglebox, mm. Go To Go Sub, Hesitant Peasant, Jason Warns, L. Curtis B. Lemon Juice is one and two, Macintosh Librarian, Mitsuyama, Picard 2010, PJ Two Itch, and Wishbone. Thank you guys. We do record this show most of the time on Fridays. Uh, however, we're not recording on Friday today. Um, of course, or next uh, week. Or next week. Uh, but uh, anyway, follow us on Twitch. And speaking of Twitch, Aaron, I want to thank all of the lovely, lovely subscribers out there. Remember, if you are an Amazon Prime customer and you've subscribed to our channel on Twitch in the past, you have to manually re-enable that subscription or else it will go away. So uh, if you'd like to do that, please do. So and, goofy. Yeah. And um, if you've got a Twitch sub just uh, laying around through your Amazon Prime subscription and you'd like to throw it our way, it does help us with the channel. Uh, Mitsuyama, thank you. Ant Jarvis, G Vebke, Muggy7, Lamatza, 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 Retro Jerry, Gigglebox, Tapes from the Crypt, Macintosh Librarian, Christian Russell, Buck Owens, D Moto Wylak, Frodo NL, Still Adolescing, Rushi, MSX, Wing Chun Wolf, Chris Folds, Go To Go USB, and Hermski. Thank you guys so much for supporting us through Twitch. All right, last week, Aaron, the Patreon song performed by the Patreon band. Yeah, outstanding. Dancing With Myself by Billy Idol. You looked like Billy when you were up there t shouting that out. I, I tried I tried my best to channel my inner Billy. Did you ever, were you a big Billy Idol fan back in I the liked day? Billy, I really liked Billy Idol, actually, quite a bit uh, back in the day. Yeah, uh, uh, it's funny. I was just talking to someone. I think it was a Discord about his his cyberpunk album, which is pretty much the album where he folded up the tent. Well, and, it's uh, it's funny because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that. So hold oh, that good. thought for just a second. Uh, Andy Craig writes in. He says your supporter song reminds me of the earlier days of ISPs when the internet was mostly research institutions, universities, and military. Billy Idol was known to occasionally get on an ISP called the Well. In fact, when he released his 1993 album, Cyberpunk, he went in a chat room there with fans to help promote it. Do you remember? So you said this album did not do wonders for his career. That, that is the, I, I, you must have afforded me that because I read that or maybe he said it to me as well. Mm. Uh, I, and I, had, I think I had one hit, but I mean, this, I knew when I heard it, I'm like, well, th this is gone. And, mm. and he, that was it. I never heard it, uh, any other hit. It, was, it was like uh, when Depeche Mode put out Construction Time again and everything was just awful after that. It's it's you know sometimes bands because his sound changed quite a bit uh, during that album uh, you know and sometimes bands do stuff to change, I don't know to modernize I mean mm -hmm. listen great bands have done it like oh, yeah. Queen did it uh, 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 tons of bands have done that and uh, sometimes they get away with it and sometimes that's into them and as there's usually a reason they're doing it it's because they know they see the writing on the wall that they're that they're that they're probably done but. Uh, uh, you know, hey, Billy Idol had a real good run, and you, like I said, you were you were the daintiest, dandiest Billy Idol I've ever seen. But well done. <laughs> uh, Cowboy Boy writes: I saw Idol perform this during his live concert at my alma mater, Moorhead State University. No, oh! <laughs> around 1983, our neck of the woods. He was so drunk he laid down on stage. Well, after he fell, and just spoke the lyrics for a while. <laughs> It was an achievement when you consider Rowan County was dry back then. For the <laughs> yep. same reason, I would have had more fun at the dorm typing another Compute Gazette game into my C64. Yeah, There's a story where Hank Williams Jr. came to town. It's funny, we just talked about him. Uh, and uh, uh, he was so drunk that he passed out on stage as well, as I recall. So that it'll happen to your it, wilder bunches. It does. Know? And I want to congratulate uh, those two, Andy and Cowboy Boy, along with Bernard Lucas, Gary Heather, Alien Breeder, Chris Folds, Lever Lord, and Barkbit for guessing the Patreon song correctly. Yeah. All right. Well so this week, uh, there we we're, we're working on a short week, as they say on for the on the Thursday night games in the NFL. So I uh, I did not prepare a Patreon song for this week. So, Aaron, the funky facts are back. I want one funky fact for each one of the... I'm just kidding. I'm not going to make you do that. That's I like... It would be a, it'd take two hours. I remember how facts. great the funky facts went last time we tried it. <laughs> so, instead, I'll just uh, I'll just read the names. Because sometimes I do, you know, in an effort to uh, sing the names and make them fit, I skip over some people. And I don't want to skip over any of these folks. Because seriously, 
these are the people that make the podcast happen. If it were, you know, not the next for- time, the next time you have an off week where you're gonna, you should get you. Since we're talking about your rap background, you should just go get you like a cheap rap beat, and you can just talk over it, rap, you know, rap style. I'd love to hear that. That's true. That's true. I should do that. Um, let's see. He's talking to Flavor Flav right now. I here, can see it. Here we go. There it is. Cello code. Mark Beland, Olaf Ho, Hermski, Jonah, aka Simulant, Jeremy Jones, the Little, Alien Breeder, Dave Velociraptor, Cowboy Boy, Joe Fuchs, Lane Denson, Luke, Hudson, John Cook, Bomb the Bass, Roshi, Frodo NL, Soul and Sizotech, Mage, Jurgen, Mr. Cola, Daniel Williams, Bernard, Lucas, Jerry Denton, Zorg Lub, Commodore Kid, Reflection, Simon Lesh, Cap'n, Crispy, Kilobytes and Caffeine, Gary Head, The Free Lunch, Kate Fa, uh, Ox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobster, Minator, Kyle Etta, Rob O'Hara, Matthew Larimore, Eddie Craig, Shonzo, Bark Bid, Roland Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, Leaf Killan, Alan Kebab, Check Cote Level Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creepy Dead Boy, Figure C, DZ, Stefan, Sorgon, Mortensen, Edvin, Helen, Blender, 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Folds, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham, Veb Key, Adam Batters, B. O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Huckers, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Tapes from the Crypt, Hoshnat, and Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim and Tommy Homebridge, Dad, Daniel Bing- Br- Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warrens, Pixels of Dawn, Kill Bjorn, Barman. Man, I shouldn't have suggested that. That, that was, was great. I apologize. That was a smashing success. Oh my God. That was, that was something. All right. Well, if you know the answer to that week's, this past week's, this, this has an answer. This past second, uh, Amigos Podcast Patreon Challenge. Write me at John at AmigosPodcast dot com. Now wait a minute. That was a song. That was a song. You were actually that was a song you just did. That was a song. I thought you were just randomly saying crap. No, no. That was that was just how it. That was just how it. If happened. anybody answers that one, somebody's already wait. answered correctly in the chat. By the way, that was Billy Joel. No. Uh, Don't read any more, or you'll give it away. I was pretty smart. Like, I knew it wasn't Billy Joel. Sure, <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, so, anyway, um, thank you all again for listening. Uh, and uh, we will see you on Saturday, July 18th, for Amigathon 2020. Until then, adios. adios.